everybody. I'm back at snorkel.tv. It's Carl Schuf, and uh, we're going to continue our discussion of loading mo images with Loader Max. Uh, and we're going to get into loading multiple images and tracking the individual progress of each image as well as the total progress of all the images loading. Now, in order to make any sense out of this tutorial, um, I strongly suggest that you watch my first video in this series where we talk about loading a single image and tracking its progress. Okay, So here we have single image, we get the progress bar, and then on complete, the image fades in. So in our first tutorial, we talked a lot about creating an image loader and the various properties and events of an image loader. Now what we're going to do is take multiple image loaders and add them to a loader max. So you may be asking, what is a loader max? Well, loader max in its simplest form is just a group of loaders. They can be image loaders, swift loaders, mp3 loaders, all mixed and matched together, however you like. And once you put all these loaders into your loader max, it's basically a queue or a list of loaders that will load in sequence. You can prioritize the loading of any asset. You can track the loading of any asset. You can unload any asset whenever you like. You can start the queue. You can stop the queue. and once all your loaders are loaded, you have a lot of convenient methods and hooks for controlling that external media that you have loaded. So I'm going to go over to load multiple images start. And here you'll see we have an FLA that doesn't have much in it. Um, we have a progress bar that tracks the progress of each child asset being loaded. And we have another progress bar to track the total. So we're going to be loading in the same uh, images. Well, we're going to have a few new ones this time around. Let me just go to my images folder here, and you'll see that we have bird, crab, lobster, and whale. And they look like this. There's bird, and then we have crab, lobster, and whale. And so you'll notice that these images um, are pretty big. They're about uh, 640 by 320, something like that. And we're going to cram all four of them onto the stage here. So we're going to show you all these different properties that we can set to scale and position each individual image and each one is going to fade in once it loads. So let's go into Flash and let's look at the actions that I already have. In the first video I talked in depth about uh, the import statements that you will use. Um, similar to the first video we're going to set our both progress bars with a scale x of 0 so that they are totally hidden. And the new stuff that we have here is we are creating a loader max instance, okay? And we're giving it the name Q. And this is pretty common in the loader max documentation and in most people's implementation. You could call this list or my loaders or a bunch of images, whatever you want to call it. Uh, but just keep in mind that a loader max is really a group of loaders that are going to load in sequence. And when you create a new loader max in the constructor, you have a number of properties that you can set. Now we're not going to go into all of them. I'm going to give you a link to the documentation uh, which will show you a little introduction to some more features of Loader Max. But you'll see that there are plenty of optional VARS properties. Over time we will be talking about um, all of these or most of them that you'll be using. And there are lots of events as we discussed in the first video. And the documentation is jam-packed full of some code examples. And all of these methods um, are extremely important and make pretty much any loading scenario that you can think of totally possible. So we got our work cut out for us, folks. But we're going to just focus on some of the basics here. Max Connections allows you to set how many assets will load simultaneously. So I could load four items at a time or six items at a time. On the Green Sox site, there is a great demo for this. And let me just go there real quick. Um, Loader Max Smart AS3 Loading. Rich Shoup has a great example of this also. Uh, he talks through this. Um, let's just load all our assets in. And you'll see they're loading in pairs two at a time. All right, that's what Max Connections does. If I unload all these and I say Max Connections equals six and then load again, you'll see that six loaders load at a time. So um, that's making the most use of your available bandwidth. So in this example here, I have multiple assets that are going to be sharing the same child progress bar. And just for the sake of demonstration, I want them all to load 
one by one. So I'm going to only going to load one at a time so that we can watch their progress individually in the same progress bar. Okay, you, by no means are you restricted to only having one connection. We're going to keep it pretty streamlined here, so we're only going to have two events starting out that we're going to respond to, the on progress and the on complete events. Now these represent the progress and the completion status of the entire queue as a whole. So queue progress handler is going to be in charge of changing the size of the total progress bar. So as each asset loads, that bar will be growing more and more. And when all the assets are loaded, that bar will have a full scale X of one. On complete means that every asset inside my loader max queue here is done. And then I can initialize my app if I wanted to or do some fancy stuff. Uh, we will be tacking on event handlers to track the individual progress of what loader max refers to as its child loaders. Okay, but let's just start real small here. So my loader max uh, has just been declared and initialized. All right, I have this container now that's waiting to have some loaders put into it. And the way we do that is with the append, append method. Okay, so I'm going to tell my queue to append and what we want to append is some sort of a loader, okay? So inside of here, I'm just going to say new image loader. And as we learned in the last exercise, the image loader needs a few parameters. The most important one is the name of the asset that's going to be loaded. So I'm going to say images slash whale dot png, okay? And now this individual loader has a few properties that we can set optionally and we're going to part put in I'm sorry or pass in a complete vars object of all the different vars or properties that we want to set so inside the two uh, curly brackets there I'm going to say that the container is going to be this and again that will refer to the main timeline the stage or the root level of my swift and I can also tell loader max what the estimated bytes of my file is going to be. And this is very important because when we're loading multiple assets, the only way Loader Max easily will know how to track the total is if it has an idea of the file size of each individual asset. Now, Loader Max has built into it an auditing system, which means that if you don't supply the estimated bytes, it will load the file very quickly just until it gets enough data to know how large that file is and then it will cancel the load automatically. I will most likely have a tutorial demonstrating just this feature, but you can read about this um, on the GreenSock site. So estimated bytes, I'm gonna give Loader Max a little nudge in the right direction and say that each image is gonna be roughly 60,000 or 90,000 bytes or 60K or 90K. And I know whale PNG is 60. So that's 60, one, two, three. So I've told it how much it's, this image is going to weigh or how, what its file size is. And that's really all I would need to do for the first image. And so now if I want to load that image, instead of loading that image loader directly, I'm going to tell my queue to load. And so I test my file out and there we go. The whale loads. Now if I test streaming, you'll see that there is the total. Well, there's only one image. So that progress also represents the, uh, progress of the individual image and the total queue. So let's put another image in there, okay? I'm gonna take this line and I'm just gonna copy and paste. And the next one I'm gonna load is gonna be my crab. So let's do crab.png. And I know that this one is a little bit larger, so I'll say it's 90,000 bytes. All right, so now I have two images inside my loader max queue. And really, a loader max queue doesn't make much sense if you only have one image. You want to have a group or a list of images. So I'm going to test now. And you probably saw real quick both images loaded. But now you'll see the true wonder of this in that one image loads and then the next image loads. Okay? Now, they're both getting placed on top of each other because they both have X and Y values of zero, and they're both going into the same container, which is the stage. Um, what I do want to point out, which I haven't shown you yet, is that in the output, let me just bring that up. I'll bring my output panel right over here. When I test this out, 
that we're already responding to the um, complete event. So as soon as both images load, we get a little trace of all images have loaded. Let's clear that out and do that one more time with our streaming. So we see the total progress, and then once that last image loads, I know that all images have loaded. So if I wanted to initialize other things in my app once I had all my images, I would do it in that on complete handler there. Um, what I want to point out with the queue progress handler, which is in charge of reporting back to us the progress of the entire queue, that we are just setting the scale x property to be whatever the current progress of the queue is. And we do that via looking at the event that's being fired, which is the on progress event. The target of that event is going to be the object that's broadcasting that event, and that's going to be my queue. And that queue has a progress, and we're using that progress to adjust the scale of my loader bar. I could also just say um, QUEUE dot progress, and then when I test again and stream, the same thing works. Um, but if you access the progress via this more dynamic property of event.target.progress, you don't necessarily have to know the name of the queue that you are tracking. And then you could have this progress handler work for multiple queues or even individual loaders. All right, that might be a discussion for another day. But let's now make sure that both of the images aren't loading into the same place. So the first image loader, I'm going to set its x to 0 and y to 0, which isn't necessarily necessary uh, because by default that's what those values are. But for consistency's sake, we'll set it. Uh, and the second loader, I'm going to say your x is going to be 320 and your y is going to be 0. So now they're going to be side by side. So let's test this out. And you'll see now that this second image has an x value of 320. My to total stage width is 640, so that's smack dab right in the middle. Now, in order to see both of these images at the same time and create the grid that I'm going for, it would be really nice if I could scale these images down. Now, what I could do is inside of the constructor, I could say, hey, you know what? The uh, scale x is going to be 0.5 and the, I'm sorry, scale y, why am I doing that, is going to be 0.5, something like that. And then now when that image loads, it's going to be really big because what did I do? You see, you weren't paying attention. I put 5 here. That should be 0.5. So please, wake up. We don't want this happening again. And so now you'll see that this image is half its normal size. Now, I can also set width and height and do fancy stuff. But the thing is, I don't want to have to tell every image loader to specifically be a specific scale. I want this setting to be applied to all of these images. So what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to add a complete handler for every asset that loads. So when it's done loading, I can apply common settings to each of them. So I'm going to say on child complete, we're going to use our image complete handler. And in order to um, avoid typing a lot of code, I'm going to do some wow. magic. And you'll see that already down here, I have my image complete handler. And we're tracing out a bunch of information about the event. And we did this in our load single image exercise. So that's not new to you. We also talked already about targeting the content of a loader event and talked about content display. But here what I'm doing new is that I'm going to tell my loaded image that its scale x is going to be equal to its scale y, which will be 0.5. So what that's going to do now is set each image to have its scale cut in half. So I only have to do it in one place. So I'm going to test this out and there you go. So now both images are shrunk down. So in the constructor of my queue, you'll notice what I'm doing is that I'm giving these objects here both unique x and y values, but since they're going to share the same scaling, I may just apply that as soon as the image loads. I also have a tween ready to go in my image complete handler 
or an alpha 2 of 1. So let's also tell each loaded image that your um, alpha property is going to start at 0. So I do this in one place inside the image complete handler and now you'll see that each image will fade in as soon as it's loaded. All right, very cool, right? So we're making things as concise as possible. Next, let's just wrap up by tracking the child progress, all right? And if you are kind of slick, you may realize that if there's an on-child complete event, there might also be an on-child progress event, and there is. So we're going to call this on-child progress, and the function that we want to call is going to be image progress complete and I'm going to do my little magic again and when I scroll down you'll see that there's already an image progress handler there and that's really what I want to name this thing excuse me all right image progress handler is the name of the function that will be called when the on child progress event gets fired so that's clear now right no one needs to make fun of me so on image progress handler we're just telling our progress bar again to set its scale x based on whatever the progress is of the loader that is being loaded and sending us this event all right since I didn't put the name of an individual loader in here in fact I don't even know what the names of these loaders are it's just saying hey whatever event is firing tell me its target which means what loader is doing this and then give me its progress so here's a great example of how we can share one event handler uh, with multiple loaders being loaded and track their progress so now I test and I stream and you'll see that the first image boom loads and then when the second one's done second one shows up and my trace will have said all images have loaded in that image complete handler I'm tracing out a bunch of information about the events just like I did in the first demo and you can see that as the progress of each child is being fired off I'm sorry the complete we get the child complete event it tells us that we're tracking an image loader and then we're tracking the first loader and this is the first image and then we have the second loader and the second image now that we're loading two images it's really no big deal to load two more images okay so let me just do a little more magic and I'm going to append two more image loaders that are going to load lobster and bird they're going to load them into the same container they're each going to have individual X and Y values um, they each have different estimated mm -hmm. bytes and but they're all going to share the same on child progress and the same on child complete handlers so I could literally have a hundred images if I wanted here I'm going to test my movie out move my progress my tracing out of the way and here you go first image loads second image loads are about 50 percent we're getting the total here almost done there's the fourth image all right so again I told you once you understand how to load one image loading four images and tracking the progress isn't really a big deal so uh, review this video review the notes that I have on smartful.tv and get ready because next what we're going to do is just throw an XML file at loader max and we're going to keep all of this data external to our flash file and uh, our action script code is going to be pretty small so let me just go to my XML loader file and do a little commercial for you alright here we're looking at the exact same behavior of four images loading and we're tracking the progress trust me it works um, but in this instance here in my actions You'll notice that huh, there's not a lot of stuff in my queue in fact I have something called an XML loader that's going to be getting all of my data and there's nothing in here about which image is loading so stay tuned we're gonna knock that one out of the park catch you soon